So what is the process? As you can see in the picture, there are multiple files in the secondary storage. Program is one of those folders that contain files. It is static, which means it doesn't affect the system or does it have any action, and its state doesn't change. It just stays in there as a program. As you can see in the picture, the program is being loaded into the RAM as it is being executed. When it is running, it needs resources and its state is changing. When it is in execution, it is a process. As I mentioned before, the process state is always changing. It is not fixed, which means a process can be in different states. A process can be in five states. New, Ready, Wait, Run, and Exit. CPU switching. So why is CPU switching? The CPU was switched to another process which is controlled by the operating system. This is to increase the efficiency of the computer. This will allow the CPU to multitask. So when the CPU switches to another program, the state of the process is being saved. So where is it stored? It's being stored in the process control block. As you can see from the diagram, the process is too big to be completed immediately. Hence, the CPU decides that it has to switch. When it's being switched, you can see that the process is being stored into individual process control block and placed back into the queue. Please note, every process is being placed into a new process control block when it is saved so that they can join back into the queue individually. Now, we know that when process wants to execute, they have to join the queue of the CPU. So how are the process queued? First come, first serve. This is the easiest to understand and the fairest way by definition. As long as the process needs resources, it will join the queue of the CPU. The queue is determined by which came first and that's why it's called first come, first serve. Preemption. Under preemption, the CPU sets how much resource it is willing to give to a process at a time. As you can see from the diagram, when a process needs more resource than is being given, the, the preemptive algorithm will actually remove the resource from the process from the CPU and place it into a process control block back into the queue. After waiting for another round, then the process will get more resources. Priority. Priority is the act of giving the privilege for usage of resource for process with higher priority. Priority is set differently by different operating system. As you can see in the diagram, the number in the box represents the priority and the number above represents the running order. So as you can see, the process with higher priority is run first and if there is two or more processes with the same priority, they will go back to first come first serve and see which process came first. Multi-level feedback queue. Multi-level feedback queue is an algorithm where there are multiple queues which can use different algorithm. However, multi-level feedback queue will prefer process with shorter runtime or in input and output devices. Shortest runtime first. So what is shortest runtime first? Yeah. It's an algorithm where the job with shortest runtime get to execute first, so there's no need for a process that runs for two unit time to wait for ten unit time. Starvation. What is starvation? In computer science, starvation is a problem encountered in multitasking where a process is denied necessary resources on purpose. Without these resources, the program can never finish its task. Starvation is usually caused by an oversimplistic scheduling algorithm. For example, if a multitasking system always switches between the first two tasks, while a third task never gets to run, then the third task is being starved of CPU time. Processor affinity Processor affinity only occurs in a multiprocessor computer. When a process runs, it just prefers one processor more than other processors. This is an example of processor affinity. As you can see in the diagram, there are two processors labeled 1 and 2. However, the process prefers processor 1 instead. Hence, it has to queue and wait for processor 1 to be done with its current process 
even when processor 2 is free and ready to run. So what are some ways to compare which algorithm will fit? Here are some ways. Throughput, average turnaround time, average response time, CPU usage, and average wait time. First, let's start off with throughput. Throughput is basically the rate of production or the rate at which something can be processed. To put it simply, throughput is the number of jobs run per hour or per minute. The average turnaround time is the total time taken between the submission of a program or process for execution and the return of the complete output to the user. Average response time The average response time is the total amount of time a processor takes to respond to a request for service. That service can be anything from a memory fetch to a disk I.O. to a complex database query or loading a full web page. CPU usage, also known as process time, is the amount of time for which a central processing unit or CPU was used for processing instructions of a computer program or operating system. Lastly, the average wait time simply means that the time that processors spend in the ready queue. Process synchronization refers to the idea that multiple processors are to join up or handshake at a certain point in order to reach an agreement or commit to a certain sequence of action. This is to prevent two or more processes from writing or using the same resource. Deadlock. What is a deadlock? A deadlock is whereby a process or thread enters a waiting state because resources requested is being held by another waiting process, which in turn is waiting for the resource. If a process is unable to change its state indefinitely because the resources requested by it are being used by another waiting process, then the system is said to be in a deadlock. It is caused mainly by three requirements, which are mutual exclusion, hold and wait, circular wait, which will be explained deeper in the rest of this video. Mutual exclusion. What is mutual exclusion? Mutual exclusion, or also known as mutex, is whereby an object creates a mutex for a given resource and locks the resource from other programs, causing other programs to only be able to take control of the resource once the mutex becomes unlocked. Hold and wait. What is hold and wait? Hold and wait is whereby a process will hold onto a resource it has and waits for another resource it is requesting from another program and will only let go of the resource once the requested resource is received. Circular wait. What is circular wait? Circular wait is whereby the processes in the system form a circular list or chain where each process in a list is waiting for a resource held by the next process in the list. So, what are the solutions for deadlock and how does the OS deal with deadlocks? The OS takes these steps to counter deadlock, which are prevention, avoidance, detection, and ignorance. Prevention. How does prevention work? Since deadlock requires three conditions to be fulfilled, prevention works by preventing one of the three conditions to be completed. Avoidance. How does avoidance work? Avoidance works by monitoring the processes closely so that there will be no multiple processes requesting the same resource. Next, detection. How does detection work? Detection tries to cure deadlock rather than prevent it after it has occurred. Lastly, ignorance. Ignorance is whereby, since a deadlock requires three conditions to occur, it is quite hard for it to occur. Hence, the OS will ignore it and let the operator solve it instead. Did using Powtoon?